collaborations on on uh, what are the different um, planes of creations in the supreme lord's manifestation so the bhu mandala the jambu dweepa the crown chat dweepa etc have, um, have have found their space and their spot in the fifth canto so after describing the upper planetary systems and the middle planetary systems now in the last chapter of the fifth canto the lower planetary systems find their space their spot as far as the description of shukadev goswami is concerned it's interesting that shukadev goswami is speaking about hellish conditions he's speaking this on the bank of on the banks of the ganga no one lies on the banks of the ganga when we are on the banks of the holy ganges water we don't speak lies what to speak of shukadev goswami he will not speak lies often times while reading the section description describing the hellish conditions uh, people sometimes think tend to think that maybe it's too much maybe this is not um, true it's just a exaggeration it's pretty euphemistic etc uh, but it's not quite it's not imagination because shukadev goswami cannot lie and let's say even if he let's just assume that he he he's speaking lies no one speaks lies on the banks of the ganga not even you and me what to speak of shukadev goswami okay let's say he's still lying he wouldn't speak lies to parikshit maharaj who is going to leave his body in another 4 days you wouldn't lie to someone who's on his departure bed let's say we're still lying we we are breaking we are going and uh, you know higher and higher and making the lock of his description uh, more and more secure so let's say he's speaking lies let's say he's speaking lies on the banks of the ganga let's say he's speaking lies to a departing person called parikshit maharaj what to speak of all those who have assembled there think about vyasadev who knows everything think about his gurudev narad muni vyasadev's gurudev narad muni is such a cosmic celestial traveler he has visa to all these places so if shukadev goswami is speaking about descriptive places and if narad muni feels that these don't exist actually he'll just put his hand up and say i have traveled extensively i have met vyasadev i have met mrigari i have met manikrip nalakuvera i have met valmiki i have met so many of them but uh, i have met dhruva i have met prahlad i have not found these uh, places that you're describing but narad muni is also sitting and patiently listening so the point to be noted is these descriptions of hellish conditions are indeed true so shukadev goswami starts describing and it's uh, quite an uh, eye opener for us we'll go very quickly through this section um, it has about 40 verses but we'll just very very quickly skim through this parikshit maharaj is asking about different conditions of life and very specifically from um, text 7 onwards or let's say from text 8 onwards shukadev goswami starts describing so in text 8 shukadev goswami describes that if someone um, tries to take over the wife or the children or the property of another man or another woman then he is thrown into a hell called as tamishra which is very dark and uh, the yamadutas chastise such a sinful person they beat him rebuke him he's he he starved given no water to drink and due to severe uh, suffering and fatigue he even faints so this is uh, we are going towards um, trying to uh, take over or try, trying to eye somebody's spouse if this mentality comes in that oh his wife uh, or her husband hmm, dot 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 uh, then this is the section text 9 also describes if someone slyly cheats another man and enjoys his wife and children then he's thrown into a place called and tamishra ta tama means darkness and uh, or let's say ignorance and andha means darkness so he's completely blinded and thrown into a dark region of ignorance it's called and tamishra and his condition is exactly like the tree being chopped at the roots before reaching and tamishra the sinful living being is subjected to so much misery so much afflictions they are so severe that he loses his sight therefore it's called andha the person becomes blind he is hit black and blue he loses all his intelligence and therefore the learned sages called it call it andha tamishra so this is for someone 
uh, text eight and nine is for someone going towards illicit activities. Now you see in text um, 10, we see um, <clears throat> someone who causes violence to others. Someone who, one, someone who causes violence to others. It could be cheating someone for business deals. It could be lying, backstabbing, uh, betraying, trying to get topple somebody out so that I can establish my position. So many things happen in the mind of a conditioned soul in Kali Yuga. You get into a corporate world and to secure your position, you have to make sure that before they charge on you, you kick people out so that your position is, is secure. So if anyone is trying to cheat, uh, make unnecessary business profit, uh, trying to extract uh, more profit from others by playing on their innocence, such a person is thrown into a hell called Raurava. In text 11, it's described. Raurava is a place where all these living beings who have been Looks like a network issue. Prabhuji uh, Mataji, Prabhuji will be joining back soon. Okay. <laughs> Seems like I'm also speaking from Gore, the Nico village. <laughs> Seems like this uh, connection problem. Just give me, just give me a moment. I'll just quickly change my position so that uh, let's see. I think I'm a little far away from the uh, from the connection, the the Wi-Fi. Let me just get closer. Just give me thirty seconds. Uh, I, I I'll just change my position and and give you a call. I'm I'm still on the call, but I'll just uh, unmute myself and and stop the video and just change the position. Just just bear with me, please. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> so we were talking about um, inflicting pain on other, others, emotional pain, physical pain. And um, we see um, in Raurava, um, Shukdev Goswami has described that uh, <clears throat> all those living entities whom we trouble, um, and very specifically even meat eating, we, we consider the lives of animals to be insignificant in comparison to the, the, the desire to taste palatable foodstuff for the tongue. We consider the, the temporary satisfaction of the tongue way more valuable uh, than the whole life of the living beings. For such, such persons who are ready to uh, inflict pain on others, even as human beings, when we are inflicting emotional pain, financial pain on others, um, when we torture someone just because they're our employee, or family, we don't deal properly with our spouse and our children, then Raurava and Maha Raurava is the place. And text 12 describes this is the place where those animals manifest um, forms. They torment this person and um, they skin him alive and eat him, eat his flesh. It's interesting that Srila Prabhupada wanted these pictures on the Bhagavad Gita. When we read the Bhagavad Gita, we see the pictures of the hellish conditions uh, portrayed in the Bhagavad Gita. It's not to scare someone, somebody, but it's to wake them up to reality. Of course, we need Katha, which attracts us towards Krishna, but we also need Katha, which detaches us from this material world. We need both kinds of kicking. We need kicking 
which inspires us to serve Krishna and love Krishna. But at the same time, we need kicking and slapping and punching, which keeps us away from uh, sinning in this world. It is described those who uh, eat um, animals, meat eating, especially after illicit sex. Now, Shukdev Goswami is hinting towards meat eating. Someone who eats meat, um, cruel animals cook, cruel, cruel, cruel animals cook poor animals. I'm sorry, pardon me. Cruel persons cook poor animals and birds alive. Such persons are condemned even by man eaters. In their next life, they are carried by the Yamadutas to a hell called as Kumbhi Pakam, where they are cooked in boiling oil. Quite an intense, intense description. Then in text 14, uh, the description of another hell called Kala Sutra is found, where if someone kills a Brahmana, well, we will say, well, I didn't kill a Brahmana, I cannot kill a Brahmana, but abortion is uh, considered to be killing a Brahmana. Someone will say, how is that killing of a Brahmana? Uh, well, that uh, living being has complete scope and opportunity to make advancement. I just have a question. Um, we have this uh, ringing tone for ex entry and exit of participants. I was just trying to um, know and understand if there's a way we can mute that so that devotees can um, hear. Okay. Um, <clears throat> if there's a way that uh, that can be um, managed so that devotees can peacefully hear and participate in the Krishna Katha. Yes, yes, probably. Yes, probably. So if, um, if there's abortion, um, we, we could say, well, the child is not a Brahmana, is not a Vaishnava. But the point to be noted is if Hiranyakashipu can have a child like Prahlad, uh, there is every possible opportunity for every living being to become a Vaishnava. So the child in the womb who gets aborted can become a Vaishnava tomorrow. So loss of life. So it's described that if there's killing like that, then they are pushed into a hell called Kala Sutra, which is made out of copper. And the person is starved inside. So there's uh, hunger and thirst, the fire of hunger and thirst in his body. And at the same time, this uh, complete uh, planet made out of copper is set on fire. <laughs> so there's fire of the sun, scorching sun above, and fire of the, uh, the corp copper planet below. And then there's fire of hunger and thirst inside. And the, the living being, it's described, sometimes lies down, sometimes sits, sometimes stands up, sometimes runs here and there and suffers in as many ways as possible for as many thousands of years as there are hair on the body of the animal. So this is, well, we can say Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> uh, Thanksgiving in America is a big thing. And uh, you, um, you see all the time there's drinking and there's uh, killing of turkeys. I don't know what turkeys do with, with Thanksgiving, but unfortunately the bad news is they are turkey. And for Thanksgiving, they are killed. So it's not going to go um, just like that. We can get away. Krishna... Make sure that there is justice for every living being. Now, text 15. Interesting. For someone who doesn't follow scriptures, someone who deviates from Shastra, Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 16, Very beautifully. Last two verses of the 16th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, text 23 and 24. Krishna says if someone deviates from Shastra, uh, then they don't get perfection even in the plane of material activities. What to speak of happiness and then what to speak of liberation. So if someone deviates from Shastra, then he's thrown into a hell called as Asi Patravana, where uh, he is whipped black and blue and he runs to save himself, so save himself into the realm of palm, leave, uh, palm trees with leaves, but these leaves are as sharp as swords and they injure all his body all over, cutting him everywhere. And he faints at every step, crying out, oh, what shall I do now? How shall I be saved? And in this way, he suffers miserably by deviating from Shastra. 
Now in check 16, we see uh, when someone um, punishes an innocent person. This is interesting. This is why we should never take sides unless we know uh, properly, ethically, both uh, camps. Sometimes we say, oh, my friend cannot lie. I take his side and I'll give my word to help him out. But uh, it's described if someone um, is instrumental in getting an innocent person punished, uh, then he's thrown into a hell called a Sukhara Mukha, where he's crushed exactly as sugar cane is crushed and squeezed through a sugar cane squeezing machine to get the juice out. Now, for those who've been in India, you exactly know. There's a machine which goes on with a bell ringing over and going through the cutting blades. So sinful living entities cries very pitiably and faints just like an innocent man who undergoes punishments. So if we punish an innocent, faultless person, we may get away with it right now, but it's already recorded. When we go into the realm of uh, Chitragupta, Yamadutas, Yam, Yamaraj, we may say, well, I didn't do this. But uh, remember, they have hard copy and soft copy. Hard copy of what it was like, the circumstance, and soft copy of what our intentions were like when we performed it. So you can't lie. They map it with time and place and circumstance, and they give it to us. So if someone has been um, uh, punishing a faultless person, government official, a judge. These days, you know, you can, in, especially in India, you can pay and have the judge give uh, judgment on your favor, on your side. So this is what happens. Okay, text 70 is, 17 is interesting. For killing of mosquitoes, killing of insects, killing of rats, killing of uh, cockroaches, killing of lizards. Um, you know, <laughs> sometimes we have um, even electric rackets to very mercilessly kill mosquitoes. So text 17 says, if someone does that, um, then what happens? Then he's thrown head down into a hell called as Andha Koopa. Andha literally means, Andha Koopa literally translates as a blind well, deep, dark, blind well. And what happens there? He gets attacked by all the birds and beasts and reptiles and mosquitoes and lice and worms and flies and all other creatures he tormented during his life. They attack him from all sides, robbing him of the pleasure of even sleep. Imagine when there is dukkha, then there is struggle and suffering. The best thing we can do is go off to sleep so that we uh, don't have to face reality. But here there is so much pain. Even if they want to just take some rest for about 10 seconds, the mosquitoes and the insects and the reptiles are chewing into the flesh of this tormentor. And unable to rest, he constantly wanders about in the darkness. Thus, his suffering is just like that of the creature in the lower species. Now, interesting, text 18 is for all of us who want to eat our meal first before feeding others. plate <laughs> You don't know whether you're going to get it or not. First, make a plate for myself. You see, typically in America, this is the way. There's buffet system. Um, and, and then there's everyone comes in, grabs your own plate, fills your own plate, and eats your own food, standing, talking. Completely against Vedic principle. You don't stand and eat. Never. It's not good for digestion. You don't speak while eating. Second. Three, you don't have shoes on while you eat. <laughs> <laughs> and fourth, you don't fill your own plate. You fill others' plate. You don't think about your eating when there are so many people waiting. So traditional Vedic culture means in, in Grihastha life, first, the prasadam is, uh, so the prasadam has been, uh, the bhoga has been made, offered to Krishna, made prasadam. And the first chapati, the first roti goes to the cow. <laughs> first. And then after that, the husband and wife come out of the house and they start Traditionally in India, of course, Vedic culture. You, you scream in all directions. If there are any sadhus walking past who are hungry, if there's anyone doing madhukari, if there's anyone who's hungry, please come and accept prasad. Krishna has accepted prasad and given remnants. Please, please, uh, you know, partake. So the sadhus all eat. And then everyone in the family, the superiors, the children, everyone accepts prasad. And then we take uh, our, our meal after everyone is satisfied. And then what is left, last, 
roti is given to the dog. But now the culture is first, everything is given to the dog. Second, everything is given to the dog. Third, everything is given to the dog. <laughs> Prabhupada uses the example of dog very nicely. 1972 in New Vrindavan, Srila Prabhupada was, uh, uh, the disciples were celebrating Prabhupada's Vyasa Puja. 1972, day after Janmashtami's Prabhupada's appearance. So Prabhupada was sitting and all the devotees, they were uh, offering um, glorifications of the spiritual master. And Prabhupada was sitting and listening. And uh, he saw that there are a lot of um, guests, a lot of um, journalists and news reporters, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, participating. And they probably did not, did not know what a Vyas Puja is. So Srila Prabhupada said, actually, it's very difficult to even meet a billionaire in this world. But by some good fortune, you meet him. Still, he will not give you time. But all that you have to do is uh, pet his dog. You know, play with the dog for a couple of seconds and give him a biscuit. And when the dog is happy wagging the tail, the billionaire is controlled. So Prabhupada said, I am not God, but God is the billionaire and I am his dog, Prabhupada said. Prabhupada said, it's very difficult to impress Krishna, but I am the dog of God. Very easy to impress me. You just chant Hare Krishna and I'm happy. And if the dog is happy, then God will be happy. This is why we are celebrating Yas Puja. So Prabhupada got in that concept of the dog on the basis of how we treat dogs on the top of our head. But traditionally, um, one should not eat unless everyone is fed. You know, even uh, His Grace Gauranga Prabhu says very interestingly that uh, in, the, in the temple at Radha Gopinath, uh, when devotees are uh, told to offer and serve the devotees, prasadam, they're always w concerned and worried. When will this line end so that I can make my plate? <laughs> because the more number of people in the line, lesser is the probability that I'll have uh, a <laughs> satisfied, complete meal. So when devotees were uh, getting concerned like that, Gauranga Prabhu said that we were observing that they were serving even um, sabji, like pickle, very little, so that they also, they finally have something for themselves. So Gauranga Prabhu said, okay, don't worry. We'll make a plate for you so that they can, they can keep seeing the plate and they can know that if I continue to serve, my future is bright. <laughs> so, you know, we have to do all that. But here uh, in text 18, it's described that we should uh, not think of our own meal. We should not think of our prasadam uh, when others are hungry. We should not keep our plate first and then keep others hungry. This is culture. Uh, <clears throat> if that is happening, then we are thrown into an abominable hell called a Skrimi Bhojana, where one is thrown into that hell, which has a lake, which is 800,000 miles wide, filled with worms. One becomes a worm in that lake, feeds on other worms who also feed on him. And unless one atones for all his activities before death, such a person remains as a worm in that lake for as many number of years as the number of Yojanas in the width of the lake, which is 100,000 years. <laughs> okay, text 19. For someone who steals, Prabhupada would say, jo hira churai wo bhi chor, jo khira churai wo bhi chor. Someone who steals a diamond is also a thief, and someone who steals a cucumber is also a thief. It doesn't matter what we are stealing. The mentality to steal is what is theft. So in text 19, it describes if someone steals, we have you know, we have stolen something. Then we are thrown into a hell called as Sam Damsha, where the skin is torn and separated by red hot iron balls and tongs. In this way, his entire body is cut to pieces. So for thievery, this is the punishment. Imagine Haridas Thakur went through this for chanting the holy name. Can we imagine? When someone comes and we have 50 falls and someone uh, counts a couple of them, we get angry. Someone is counting and finding faults which exist in us, we get angry. We're not ready to take it. Haridas Thakur gives up everything and chants 300,000 names of Krishna every day. And his skin is being torn. And his bones are broken. And it's almost bloodshed on the street. And he says, Khanda Khanda Deha Jai Jadi Jai Pran Tabu Vadane Na Chodibu Harina. 
You can break my body to pieces and skin me alive. But what to do? My tongue is not stop, stopping to chant the holy name. What can I do? I am helpless. In Vrindavan, they sing very beautifully. Ab kaise chote naam rat lagi. Oh, what do I do now? I have got into this bad habit. My tongue is not stopping to chant the holy name. <laughs> so it's a sarcastic way of saying this is the good habit to cultivate. Hmm? There was a devotee by the name Rup Kaviraj. And he was giving Bhagavatam class, you know, in Gaura Leela. Um, <clears throat> in Acharya Leela. So he was giving Bhagavatam class. Very exalted hmm, devotee. So one girl called Krishna Priya Devi was sitting there and chanting the holy name. She, her tongue was vibrating as she was listening to Harikatha. So Rup Kaviraj got angry. He said, wait a minute. Are you listening to Harikatha or are you chanting? Because we are, we are always advised we should do one or the other. If you're hearing, you shouldn't chant. And if you're chanting, you shouldn't hear Harikatha. You should be in the moment. But Krishna Priya Devi was so exalted in her process of chanting that she, her tongue would not stop. It was vibrating 24 hours a day. Even when she was sitting in the Bhagavatam class, her tongue was vibrating. So she, she told Rup Kaviraj that what do I do? My tongue is not stopping. Rup Kaviraj thought that she's making an excuse. He didn't say anything, but he got very angry that this person is not paying attention to my Harikatha. He's actually sitting and chanting. And sure enough, Rup Kaviraj uh, in a few days fell down from spiritual standing because of, his, because of this offense. So of course, we are not advised to sit with bead bag when a senior devotee is speaking. But the point I'm making is when someone is so addicted to the holy name, and the tongue is vibrating continuously. There is no higher gain. One will feel like chanting all through, in and out, in the bathroom, outside the bathroom, in the class, in the Mangalarati, in the, on the bed, while eating, while sleeping. Kaite, shuite, jatha, tatha, namlo. Eating, sleeping, just walking, talking. Keep chanting the holy name like that. So the point is, Haridas Thakur was chanting, and Krishna tried to show the world his level of tolerance. But here, if someone is stealing and is into thievery, then this is the punishment. Okay. Text 20 and 21 talk about illicit sex back again. Shukdev Goswami gets the topic back to it. He says if there is uh, indiscriminate indulgence in sex life, then one is thrown into hells called as Tapta Surmi and uh, Vajra Kantaka Shalmali. What happens there is that there are men and women who are beaten with whips. The man is forced to embrace a red hot iron form of a woman and a woman is forced to embrace a similar form of a man. This is the punish punishment for illicit sex. Also, it is described that there are uh, silk cotton trees full of thorns as strong as thunderbolts and the sinful man is put on top of the tree and he's pulled down forcibly so that the thorns very severely tear his body. So this is for illicit sex. Shukdev Goswami is giving us this description so that by reading this, we get scared and we don't do, uh, we don't uh, commit any sin. Text 22, if we neglect our duties, Krishna has given us Varna and Ashrama. We are husband, wife, father, mother, daughter, sister, son, whatever our duties are, very specifically for those whose lives influence others like politicians um, and, and big Kshatriya position of royalty, if they don't perform their duty properly, then what happens? They are thrown into a river of hell called as Vaitarani. This river <clears throat> is filled with ferocious aquatic animals and they begin to eat him immediately. So, well, we will say, at least we will die quickly. Shukdev Goswami said, no, sir, because the suffering is so high, you want to die. But because it's a hellish condition, he will not let you die. So the, the ferocious aquatics are pulling and eating through the flesh and the person doesn't die. We'll say at least he can drink water in the, in the, in the river. Again, no, sir, because this river um, is made of stool, urine, pus, blood, hair, nails, bones, marrow, flesh, and fat. So you can't drink, you can't eat. Uh, the ferocious aquatics are chewing into our flesh. And we don't die. So it's really miserable. Text 23 talks about those who don't have a regulated lifestyle of cleanliness. We have intermixing nowadays. Intermingling is such a big uh, thing. We have apps, dating apps. First, I have to get to know someone. 
physical compatibility, emotional compatibility, financial compatibility, this compatibility, that compatibility, and then I will decide. I've seen cases where uh, people are having two, three children also, and they're still not married. We're still trying it out. <laughs> so Shukdev Goswami says, well, uh, that is text 23, where they're also thrown into rivers like this, filled with all these disgusting stuffs. Not just thrown, they're forced to eat these things. Text 24. Again, Shukdev Goswami comes back to meat eating. If we have uh, caused um, harm and we have caused um, innocent animals, birds to, um, to suffer and struggle, we have been to hunting. Uh, I know a very close friend of mine, he was explaining and mentioning to me when he was a child, uh, his uh, father would take him and his brother into the forest with uh, guns just to shoot the animals and so that they can, they can learn um, shooting and hunting. And he was telling me that uh, this is how I spent my childhood. It's, uh, it's inconceivable how many birds and how many animals I have shot dead, he was telling. So here in text 24, uh, if we kill animals, whether it's for our tongue or for hunting, etc., then we are thrown into prana rodha, where yamadutas keep us as targets and shoot sharp arrows through our body and we don't die. So every arrow is shot through the body. Okay, now text 25, for someone who is not humble. <laughs> so we'll say, well, I have not committed these sins. But text 25 says, for someone who's proud and not humble, text 25, material prestige. We cause harm to others because we think we are something better. Um, unlimited pain in a hell called as uh, Vishasana. Text 26. For you to read text 27 when uh, we poison someone else nowadays we see even in different criminal cases um, there's poisoning going on on purpose uh, the the cops they track the serial killer and get to know that this person has been suddenly so many members of the family have been dying one after another and then they track down that there's a serial killer in the family who's administering this uh, poison in the in the food of all these individuals so anyway very very uh, nasty and disgusting thought but this is unfortunately the way the world works one or someone who forces uh, tax income tax and uh, makes others pay you know on, on on force they're thrown into a hell called a sar meyadana where 720 dogs with teeth as strong as thunderbolts they voraciously devour and eat these sinful people when I travel in the, in the, from the airports, you see many airports here in America have um, security in the form of sniffer dogs. And they say, don't pet the dogs, uh, don't feed the dogs, etc. I'm thinking of forget about feeding or petting the dogs. I just have to escape the dog because the dogs are so big and, and they come to smell. And I'm, I'm typically in my box, I'm carrying uh, my shaligrams. So I'm holding that box of shaligrams and I'm walking. And I don't want a dog to smell the box of shaligram. So I'm typically trying to take it away from the dog. And the dog gets more suspicious. He starts sniffing more and more. <laughs> so one dog in Atlanta, Georgia, can uh, make us uh, scared in, in, the, in, the, in the airport. But now 720 dogs with teeth as strong as Thunderbolt. I can't even imagine what that means. Okay, text 28. A person who bears false witness or lies in business transaction or giving charity. Sometimes we give um, X amount of charity, but in, to the world we say 3X so that people appreciate us. And they think, Dhanavendra Mahabali, we are, the, we are great uh, magnanimous uh, donors. Or we sometimes bear false witness and we lie in business transactions. Typically, we have to sell our product, so we have to lie. That is considered to be an offense because it's cheating. That's, um, so a person is thrown into a hell called as a vichi mata, where there is no vichi. Vichi means water or waves. <clears throat> Yamuna madhura, vichi madhura. Salilam madhuram, kamalam madhuram, madhuradi pate akilam madhuram. So vichi means waves. A vichi, which means this place has no water. It looks like water. But when thrown, the person realizes that it's actually stones which look like reflective water. 
and he's thrown from the top of a mountain. And he thinks I'll land into water, but he goes head down on a rock. Uh, and then his body is broken to tiny pieces. Then he's taken up again because he doesn't die. Again on top of the cliff and thrown head down again. Continuously suffers chastisement. Okay, 29, text 29 for intoxication. Liquor, um, drugs, tobacco, etc. Smoking, drinking. Drinking alcohol. Uh, one is taken to a hell called as a uh, yahapan. Someone will say, well, what's the problem in alcohol? At least I'm not troubling anyone. I'm not harming anyone. But we are harming the body in which we can do Hari Bhajan. That body, which is a very rare gift to get out of this material world. It's Krishna's body. We are taking that and trying to destroy and have liver cirrhosis. So the offense of destroying Krishna's property is there. So what happens? Yamadutas, they stand on the chest of such offenders and pour hot melted iron into their mouths. Hare Krishna. The tongue which is meant for Charanamrita. You see, there's so much suffering. Text 30. Someone who, now this is very, very interesting. If we don't respect others, if we don't respect, Amani Namana Dena, this is the principle. If someone doesn't show proper respect to others who are more elevated than us by standard of birth, let's say someone is uh, older than us in age, two, austerity, someone is more austere in spiritual life than us. For In, in Marathi, they say, Ekadeshi Dupat Khashi. Which means on the day of Ekadashi, we see the person eats more than on normal days. On the, on the name of fasting, uh, there's complete feasting. It's almost like one person came to the temple on the day of Ekadashi and he was given so many meals. This, that, Ekadashi pizza, Ekadashi pasta, Ekadashi halwa, Ekadashi this, Ekadashi that. And he became so happy. He said, I want to come to this temple on every Ekadashi. <laughs> <laughs> so that he can enjoy this meal. So if someone is more austere, we should be respectful. Three, someone is more educated, materially or spiritually, more qualified, we should offer obeisances. Behavior, someone is more cultured, we should offer obeisances. Cast, by birth, if someone is uh, given a better situation, hmm? uh, birth situation, that is because of their past pious activities, we should be respectful. Spiritual order, if someone is more spiritually advanced, we should be respectful. If envy comes in our heart and we're not able to respect someone who's older by age, austerity, education, uh, culture, etc., then what happens? We think we can get away with that. I am not criticizing, but I'm not going to show respect. My heart doesn't melt with affection and I can't show respect. We sometimes think like that. Such a person is thrown into a uh, hell called as Chara Kardama, where there's unending tribulations at the hands of the Yamadutas. One time my uh, Guru Maharaj, Srila Guru Maharaj told me, Srila Radha Govinda Maharaj told me in Hindi, Ayogya Vyakti ko bhi Yogya Samman dena chahiye. Which means even an unworthy person uh, should be offered worthy respect. You know, they may be unworthy, but Krishna has not left their heart. Krishna is still sitting in their heart. So therefore we should respect them. So we should respect everyone. Being proud and not being uh, respectful to anyone, being envious of others, this is the hell. So if not... Respecting that person, we can at least be selfish to save ourselves from this hellish condition. Let me respect everyone. Let me be humble and not think I'm better than others. Text 31. For those who are um, sacrificing, again, Shukdev Goswami comes back to meat eating. Uh, if there's uh, killing of animals or even, let's say, human flesh cannibals in the, in the African jungle, so to speak. Um, what is happening? Um, they are... They are taken to a hell. Okay, this is uh, perform. Yes, there are men and women in this world who sacrifice human beings to Bhairava or Bhadrakali and then eat their flesh. Those who perform such sacrifices are taken after death to the abode of Yamaraj, where these victims, having taken the form of Rakshasas, cut them to pieces with sharpened swords. Just as in this world, the man eaters drank the victim's blood, dancing and singing in jubilation. Their victims now enjoy drinking the blood of the sacrifices and celebrating in similar ways. Okay, text 32. This is for those of us who um, like to play uh, with insects. 
let's say if there's an insect who learns to fly, who, who knows to fly, you hold that insect and you tie a thread to the end of that insect. And when the insect is flying, you use it as a, as a kite and you try to control the insect. Don't let it fly. And then you let it go again and then you again play. There are people who do that also in this world. Or those who cultivate and give shelter to animals and birds only to destroy them later. Think about those who take care of um, chickens. They cultivate. It's, it's, it's an industry where they cultivate chickens only to murder them. Cows are cultivated only to be slaughtered. Same goes with the pigs. Same goes with the sheep and the goat. So here, Srimad Bhagavatam says, I am not saying, Amala Puran, Srimad Bhagavatam, our best friend is teaching us. With the list, Shukdev Goswami is saying sins, hellish condition with the names and circumstances there. So there what happens? One is thrown into a hell called as Shula Prota, where bodies are pierced with sharp needle-like lances. They suffer from hunger and thirst and sharp beaked birds, um, such as vultures and herons, come at them from all directions, tearing their body, torturing and suffering the person is uh, remembering his sinful past activities that he has committed. Text 33, for those of us who are always angry, you know, we're almost uh, all the time angry. And in fact, we are proud of that also. In Hindi, you say, Tum jante nahi kisse baat kar rahe. You have no clue whom you're talking to. In English also, we say, mind your tongue. You have no clue whom you're talking to. So we are proud of our situation and we are always arrogant and Dambha, darpa, abhimana, krodha, parusha, mevacha, adhyanam, chabi, jata, se, partha, sampadam, asurim. In the 16th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, if we are harsh, we are arrogant, we are deceitful, very proud, always angry. This is a demoniac quality. For, for all of us who are angry, always hissing at others around, then there is a hell called as Danda Shukha, where serpents with five and seven hoods they are uh, eating and chewing these uh, living beings, just like snakes eat mice, Shukdev Goswami says. In fact, in Bollywood, Amitabh Bachchan, uh, you know, a few decades ago, was famous as the angry young man. Posters of him everywhere and people are saying, angry young man. That was a big title as if Supreme Personality of Godhead. <laughs> but uh, but uh, here it describes. Trividam narakasyedam dwaram nashanam atmanaha. If there is anger and envy towards everyone, then this is our situation. Okay, text 34. Those who confine other living entities in dark wells, granaries, or mountain caves, they are put in a hell called as Avata Nirodhana, where they are pushed into dark wells with poisonous fumes and smoke suffocate them and suffer very severely. Sometimes we do that with insects. We try to trap them and we look through the glass, how they are struggling. So small, small things like that are noted. Okay, now text 35 is very, very interesting for Grihasthas. When guests come home and we think, Are, aage, mo, Oh, they have come. They didn't even tell me that they are coming. Or sometimes the husband uh, will tell uh, his friends, ha, ha, ye, ye, ke liye aje. Please come home. Oh, you also come. You also come. And then he forgets to tell his wife <laughs> how many people are coming for Prasad. So when they come, the Mataji doesn't look at them. <laughs> she looks at her husband. <laughs> he says, I forgot to tell you. You know, so she doesn't have a head count. Now she has to cook in the kitchen. Of course, mothers are very kind, so they do it. But sometimes we don't uh, appreciate guests. Prabhupada writes a very brilliant purport here to text 35. He says that... Uh, even if an enemy comes home, someone who has criticized us, someone who has backstabbed us, someone who has really hurt us publicly, even if such a person comes home, he should forget that he is, a, he is an enemy. That should be our level of service and hospitality. So if we are always um, uh, displeased with people coming home for prasadam or for stay, then they are thrown into a hell called Pariyavartana, where just like we gazed, you know, we looked at our guests with sharp eyes. Here we are gazed by hard-eyed vultures, herons, crows, and similar birds who suddenly scoop down and pluck our eyes out with great force. Oh, Krishna. Okay, text 36. If one is very rich and thinks, who can equal me? 
again pride you know even he suspects his superiors sometimes that they will take away his wealth idam asti idam api me bhavishyati punar dhanam krishna says in the bhagavad gita chapter 16 that today i have so much wealth tomorrow i will multiply and make more um and in this way one makes plans that i will become a millionaire i become a billionaire and if anyone tries to stop me i will try to take wipe them out of the uh, business competitive market if this mindset is there uh, that i want to be up and i want to keep, keep everyone down and i want to make more and more money attachment to wealth greed what happens he is thrown into a hell called as suchi mukha ha huh, where yamadutas they are stitching thread through his entire body like weavers manufacturing cloth very painful we get one nail prick a uh, pin prick uh, needle for injection and then you know there's so much pain so in this way shukdev goswami describes 28 different types of hells and he says i have described to you o parikshit all these different kinds of hell as they exist now parikshit maharaj is very compassionate he hears all these 28 different kinds of hell and his heart is melting and bleeding he says oh Parik- shukdev goswami you have not described completely now this is the point of the cherry that i was talking about you know the c- congratulations everyone you have survived through the descriptions of 28 different kinds of hells <laughs> parikshit maharaj tells shukdev goswami that you have not completed the katha you have told about all these hellish conditions but you have not given a path by which those who in hell can come out or those who are making their way to hell can protect themselves so you please tell me so shukdev goswami gives many suggestions of which one he says there must be prayash chitta there must be atonement if a person atones for his sins uh, then no problem as shukdev goswami is speaking this parikshit maharaj cuts the argument through like a student and he says oh gurudev oh teacher Uh, i have to humbly say that uh, i disagree to this point to atone for all the sins we have to remember all the sins in the first place if i know i have made a sin then i can atone for it but hundreds and thousands and millions of sins are being committed how do i remember all of them and atone them so this doesn't make any sense then he tells us guru dev is there any other formula please tell me so shukdev goswami says yes if you develop transcendental knowledge you understand that this is hell this is heaven this is you know different paths are given you get to know you read this chapter then you will be careful not to commit them etc shukdev goswami parikshit maharaj is not very happy he says when the forest is burnt through a forest fire the trees are all burned down to ashes but the roots are still there under the ground so when it rains the roots get fructified and the tree grows back again So Parikshit Maharaj says, even if I atone properly with knowledge, and I don't commit it in the future, let's say I atone, but the tendency to commit sin is always there, and when the situations become right uh, or ripe, uh, the roots fructify, and again there's an offense. Please give me a way by which even the roots uh, of sinning propensity they can also be uplifted, they uprooted. ಕ್ವಚಿತ್ಯಾಂಗ to bathe and when he bathes and he comes out he feels cold so he throws the dust again so this goes back and forth so atonement and then sinning again atonement and sinning doesn't make any sense to me shukdev goswami says what do you want to hear parikshit maharaj said i have less time don't cheat me don't test me give me the solution shukdev goswami says kechit kevala ya bhaktya vasudeva parayana agham dhunvanti karsnena niharam eva bhaskar canto 6 chapter 1 text 15 if someone performs bhakti to shri hari then just just like the rays of the dawn sun sun doesn't even have to be on the on the top uh, during noon just the rising sun the rays of dawn of 6 o'clock 6:30 in the morning those rays can destroy all the darkness collected by the night sky overnight all of them get destroyed just by the rays of the rising sun so just like the dark sky of all our bad activities exist and they 
cannot remove them out of our life. Just the rising sun of bhakti, not even the matured form of bhakti, just the rays of bhakti, the sun of bhakti, they can destroy. And to make this point, Shukdev Goswami gives the example of the story of Ajamil. Someone who's that abominable, if we change the holy name of Sri Hari, Kvachaham kitavah papam brahmagno nirapatrapa kvacha na ra ya na iti etat bhagavan nama mangal. Ajamil has said that who am I? Kvachaham kitavah papam. I'm sinful. Brahmagna, destroyer of Brahmanical culture. And a patrapa, still shameless. But one good thing that I did, na ra ya na iti. I somehow chanted the holy name. And Bhagavan Nama Mangalam. Everything else the holy name took care of. I didn't do anything. So therefore, first one hour, whatever we discuss now, this is important so that it kicks us out with detachment, out of the sinful activities that we perform in this world. But now what we are going to discuss in the next 15 minutes is what is going to inspire us to go back home, back to God. The Shastra describes so beautifully, there are so many verses in the Skanda Puran, Dwarka Mahatmya, chapter 38, text 45, Prahlad Maharaj has said, Krishna Krishneti Krishneti Kalo Vakshati Pratyaham Nityam Yajna Yutam Punyam Tirtha Koti Samudbhavam. Prahlad Maharaj has said, if someone says Krishna Krishna Iti Krishna Iti, three times Krishna, Kalo in the age of Kali Yuga, Vakshati Pratyaham, chants these names every day. <coughs> what happens? Nityam, if he is constantly chanting the holy name, Yajna Ayutam Punyam, he gets the credit of performing 10,000 Yajnas. And Tirtha Koti Samudbhavam, crores and crores of pastime places start living in his body just by chanting holy name. So we don't have to go to Ganga, Yamuna, Chaiva, Godavari, Saraswati. We don't have to go to these rivers. These rivers will come searching for the body of someone who is chanting Harina. Look at this Padma Puran, Uttar Khanda. Tatraiva Ganga Yamunacha Veni Godavari Tatra Saraswati Cha Sarvani Tirthani Vasanti Tatra Yatra Stitam Nama Sahasrakam Tad. Wherever there is holy name being chanted of Sri Hari, Tatraiva Ganga, Ganga lives there. Yamunacha Veni, Yamuna lives there. Godavari Tatra Saraswati Cha. All these sacred rivers enter the body of someone who is constantly chanting Harina. Think about it. When someone is chanting a very high number of Harina and his body is filled with Ganga, Cha, Yamuna, Chaiva, Godavari, Saraswati, sacred rivers are living in his body because he's chanting Harina. When that person starts speaking Harikatha, those rivers start emanating from his mouth and they enter the ear holes of someone who's hearing. And that is how his heart gets cleansed. This is the science. Tasmin Mahan Mukharita Madhvish Charitram. Vasu, uh, Vasudeva Katha Prashna Purusham Trim Punatihi Vaktaram Prachakam Shrotram Yat Padam Salilam Yatha. Bhagavatam has defined and described at so many places. If you do bhajan, if you are chanting the holy name and you are speaking Harikatha, then the rivers will live in your body, sacred rivers. And they will emanate from your mouth and they will enter the ear holes of the listener and drench his heart. Not just cleanse his heart, but drench and saturate his heart with bhakti. Now Skandapuran describes Tatra Putra Gaya Kashi Pushkaram Kurujangalam Pratyaham Mandire Yasya Krishna Krishna Iti Kirtanam. That place where there is Krishna Krishna Iti Kirtanam. Every day there is chanting of Hare Krishna Mahamantra. Krishna is telling Brahma, Hey Putra, O son, that is the place Ganga, Kashi, Pushkaram, all these great places. You don't have to go to these places. Those places will come searching for you if you chant Harina. Pratyaham Mandire Yasya, that person who has considered his body to be a temple of Hari and worships Hari by chanting the holy name every day. This is the benediction. Sakridnaraya Nityuktva Puman Kalpashatatrayam Gangadi Sarvatirthesu Snato Bhavati Nishchitam Brahma Vaivarta Puran. Brahma Vaivarta Puran is describing Sakrid Narayana Iti Uktva just by chanting once Narayana. You can sit at home now. You're all on mute. Just say Narayana. Aha, very nice. Sakrit Narayana Iti Uktva. Just by chanting that, Puman, a person, Ganga Adi Sarva Tirthesu Snato Bhavati. 
nishchitam there is complete guarantee that he becomes as pure as dipping into the ganga ganga lives in his body how long does ganga live in his body kalpa shata trayam even if someone has given up the chanting of the holy name ganga lives in that person's body <coughs> kalpa shata trayam traya means 3 shata means 100 shata traya means 300 kalpa 300 kalpas lifetime after lifetime ganga lives in the body of a person who has once chanted harina bolo what else do you want now anybody who hears this description of harina they can forget the first one hour of harikatha the first one hour that we described about the hellish conditions keep it aside provided we remember this if we forget this and we don't continuously chant the holy name then we have to remember the first one hour this is why smartavyam satatam vishnu vismartavyo na jatuchit sarva vidhi nishedasyur etayoreva kinkara always remember krishna because that will give love of god it never forget krishna because then we have to remember hellish conditions like that acha now we are saying what is the benefit of chanting one krishna naam think about this sarvesham eva yajnanam lakshani cha vratani cha teertha snanani sarvani tapamsi anashani cha vedapata sahasrani pradakshinyam bhuvashatam krishna naam ja pasyasya kalam na arhanti shodashim brahma vai varta purana sarvesham eva yajnanam all the yajnas and lakshani vratani and lakhs and lakhs millions and millions of vratas auspicious vows teertha snanani and bathing in all past time places sarvani tapamsi all the austerities anashanani different kinds of sacrifices veda paata sahasrani thousands and thousands of times reading atharva sama rig and yajur veda and pradakshinyam bhuvah shatam performing the pradakshina the circumambulation of mother earth 100 times putting all of this together it does not even equal 1/16th of the credit of one saying krishna krishna naam japasyasya kalam na arhanti shodashim shodashim means 1/16th na arhanti if someone says all of this put together equals 1/16th the credit of one chanting krishna he is an offender because he does not know what hari naam is hari naam is that great that great huh? in the skanda puran it has been described that <clears throat> if someone gives gokoti danam grahane khagasya prayag gangodak kalpavasam yajnayutam meru suvarna danam govinda kirte na samam shatam shaihi gokoti danam if someone gives cows in charity kitne how many koti 1 crore एक करोड़ मिले तो दान दे मिल ही नहीं रहे वेर विल यू फाइंड वन करोड़ काउस टू गिव इन चैरिटी देर ऑल इन द स्लॉटर हाउस सो गो कोटी दानम गिविंग वन करोड़ काउस इन चैरिटी दैट टू ग्रहण एक हगस्य ड्यूरिंग द सन सोलर इक्लिप्स ड्यूरिंग द सोलर इक्लिप्स गिविंग वन करोड़ काउस इन चैरिटी हाउ मच बेनिफिट कीप इट टू द साइड प्रयाग गंगोद का कल्पवासम लिविंग ऑन द बैंक्स ऑफ गंगा फॉर वन कल्प इम्पॉसिबल दैट इज सेकेंड third yajnayutam meru suvarna danam performing 10000 yajnas and giving all the priests and purohits at the end mountains meru mountains of gold now put one two and three circumstances together it doesn't even equal govinda kirtayar na samam shata amshaihi 100th part of chanting the holy name of govinda even that is more higher than all of this put together someone will say that is for krishna naam but if i want to chant ram naam what is the benefit nahi nahi we are there we are there we are having for everybody so padma puran says ram rameti 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 cha punar japan sa chanda lopi putatma jayate natra samshayam na atra samshayam there is no doubt chanda even a dog eating fellow if he gives up his malpractice putatma he will become very very pure by ram ram iti ram iti ram iti cha punar japan by constantly chanting the name of ram if by constantly chanting the name of ram we give up all sinful activities and continuously chant the name of ram or oh, then we will not suffer for the reactions at the same time uh, one will uh, hari gano bhavet one will become an associate of hari 
there is no fear of kumbhi pakam or tamishra and tamishra just that we shouldn't commit those sins again now if we are chanting the holy name <coughs> and our collar is up we think ah i can do any nonsense and get away namno balat yasya cha pap buddhi this becomes a seventh offense to the holy name to commit sinful activities on the strength of the holy name let the bygones be bygones let the past be past don't look at them again cry in regret and guilt and remorse that i am such an offender and take complete shelter of the holy name 16 rounds is definitely wonderful it will definitely work prabhupad has given that number so it will definitely work but in humility the living entity thinks i am so sinful i need high dosage i need high dosage the fever is so high that my my dosage has to be increased this is why prabhupada in so many purports yesterday i was seeing 6000 times in the veda base prabhupada has spoken about chanting and many times more than 1000 times prabhupada says constant chanting in one letter prabhupada says therefore our formula is 24 hours chanting <laughs> we have to feel helpless that krishna there is no offender like me please give me shelter apart from hari nam i have no one ha huh. kurukshetram tatha kashi gaya vaidwaraka tatha sarva teertham kritam tena naam uccharana matratah just by naam uccharana sarva teertha kritam he has performed circumambulation of all the teerthas like kurukshetra kashi gaya dwarka ityadi we are not saying don't go to those places but by going to those places and we don't chant we are going to see the dham on the basis of our eyes what is the pujari doing how much dakshina he is taking this is what we see in the dham but if we are chanting the holy name the dham will be manifest in the heart of the chanter he will be in australia and continuously chanting and krishna will give him darshan in the heart darshanam nam didrikshu nam dehi bhagavat arpitam hmm? sarvendriya gunanjana acha now padma puran uttarakhand describes the glories of ramna kim vai teerthe te tata prithivyamata ne krite kim vai teerthe what is the need of going to any teertha narad muni is asking <laughs> he who is wandering so much is asking what is the need to wander prithivyam athane krite why to wander around mother earth finding teerthas yasya vai nama mahima shrutva moksham avapnuyat forget about chanting by hearing the glories of hari nam not hearing hari hari nam hearing the glories of hari nam mukti mavapnuyat one gets liberated then why go and search for past time places instead sit and chant narad muni is saying and he says tat mukham tu mahat teertham you want to find the teertha the past time place you want to find the teertha the great pilgrimage place Uh, then look at the mouth of someone who's chanting the holy name <laughs> tan mukham tu mahat teertham that mouth is a mahat teertha is a pilgrimage place and tan mukham kshetram eva cha that mouth is the pious place to take darshan which mouth yan mukhe ram rameti tan mukham sarvakamikam that mouth where the holy name of ram is chanted all desires get fulfilled then why are we worrying so many places the same thing has been mentioned ha now skanda puran nagar khand rameti du akshara japah sarva papa panodakah gachchan tishthan shayano va manujo ram kirtanat a living entity who does ram kirtan the name of ram when gachchan while walking tishthan while standing shayano va while sleeping which means constant chanting ऐसा नहीं कि चैंटिंग किया और रख दिया यू जस्ट चैंट एंड यू कीप इट नो दुनिया के काम करते रहियो हरे कृष्ण नाम जपते रहियो हैंड्स एंड लेग्स आर परफॉर्मिंग एक्टिविटीज इन दिस वर्ल्ड बट द टंग इज मूविंग इंडिपेंडेंटली चैंटिंग द होली नेम सो इफ समवन व्हाइल वॉकिंग स्टैंडिंग सिटिंग रेस्टिंग इज चैंटिंग द नेम ऑफ राम दो अक्षर जप दीस टू सिलेबल्स सर्व पाप अपन उदक दे विल जस्ट डिस्ट्रॉय ऑल द सिन्स अच्छा व्हाट एल्स इह नि वर्तितो याति The, not just clear the bank account of sins liberate the person and ante hari gano bhavet and give one's constitutional form in the spiritual world of this there is no doubt ha huh. now <clears throat> if someone doesn't chant the name of ram skanda puran says 
Yavan na vadate vacha. He who through his tongue doesn't chant the name Rama Nama Manoharam. This, this very interesting name, entertaining name of Ram. What happens? Tavat papa bhaya pumsam. All the sins start living in the heart. And kataranam supapinam. They start roaring. <laughs> the sins get nourished when we don't chant. So if you chant, we become Hari Gana, the associate of Hari. And if we don't chant, the sinful tendency becomes stronger and stronger in the heart. If someone chants the holy name, look what the Supreme Lord is saying. Krishna Krishneti Krishneti Yomam Smarati Nityashaha. If someone remembers me by chanting my name, what will I do? Jalam Bhitva Yatha Padmam Narakat Uddharam Yaham. Just like Gajendra, he uplifted, he uprooted the, the lotus and offered it to Hari. He didn't offer the water. He removed the lotus from the water and offered. Krishna says, similarly, when you're stuck in the water of hell, I will pick you up like the lotus was picked by Gajendra and give you Vaikuntavas. You don't worry. The Supreme Lord is saying, but for that, you have to chant. Krishna is saying, Nitya Shaha, constantly remember me. Huh. Now, <clears throat> this, this is interesting. Narada Puran describes Aho Bhagyam Aho Bhagyam Harinamarat Atmanam Tridashai Apite Puja Kim Anyai Bahu Bhashitaihi Aho Bhagyam Aho Bhagyam If so, what great fortune, what great fortune Harinam Rata Atmanam Those who are constantly absorbed in chanting Harinam Tridashaihi Apite Puja Even in heaven they get glorified Kim Anyai Bahu Bhashitaihi Then what to speak of other souls? Other places, won't they get glorified there? Rup Goswami has described in the Padyavali. Akrishti Krita Chetasam Sumanasam Uchatanam Jamhasam Achandala Mamuka Loka Sulabho Vashya Chamukti Shriha Nodikshana Chasatkriya Purasharas Nodikshana Nachasatkriya Nachapuras Charyamanagi Kshate Mantro Yamrasanas Prigeva Palati Shri Krishna Namatmakam Rupa Goswami has said, if someone starts chanting Harinam, Brahma starts arranging the Arti plate. Because he knows this Jiva is going to pass through Brahma Loka, going to Vaikuntha. So Brahma will offer Arati to such a soul who is chanting the holy name. Rupa Goswami says, if someone chants the name of Hari, Chitragupta gets very sad and he starts tearing all the pages that he has written. <laughs> so, Aho Bhagyam, Aho Bhagyam, great fortune, great fortune. Hari Nam Aratatmanam, to those who are absorbed in chanting Hari Nam. Tri Dashaihi Apite Pujyaha, even in heaven they get glorified. Kim Anyai Bahu Bhashitaihi, then what to speak of glorification in this material world? Hmm? Like that. Achha. Now, last, uh, last uh, couple of verses before we wrap up. Skanda Puran, Vaishnava Khanda, Vaishaka Mahatmya, chapter 21, text 36, 37. In watch, what mood should we chant? Any mood. Mood ho ya na ho chant karna hai. Bas. Whether our mind is absorbed or no, tongue must vibrate. Prabhupada was asked, Prabhupada, my mind is not getting absorbed. Prabhupada said, chant with your tongue and hear with your ear. Where is the mind here? <laughs> don't, don't mess it up so much with mind is absorbed, not absorbed. Even when the mind is not absorbed, we are brushing our teeth. Even when the mind is not absorbed, we take a bath. Even if the mind is not absorbed, we are honoring Prasad. So we just go through the motions and we get absorbed in these activities. One day when we don't bathe on time, we get restless. Something is missing. Something is missing. So we should feel like that for Harina. So what mood? Think about this. Hasyat. Every time you laugh, just say Hare Krishna. Once. You're laughing at a joke. <laughs> Hare Krishna. So that laughter, that joke has become successful because we have chanted Hare Krishna. Hasyat, bhayat, when we are afraid, chant Hare Krishna. Tatha krodat, when we get angry, chant Hare Krishna. Kamat, when we get lusty, chant Hare Krishna. Dveshat, athapiva, when we get envious, chant Hare Krishna. Snehat, when we have affection for someone, chant Hare Krishna. Sakrit ucharya, just once say, Harinam, Vishnoho, Nama, Agha, Haricha. That all, uh, all powerful name of Vishnu, which can steal all our sins, just chant. Then what happens? Papishthapi. Papishtha api gachanti. Papishtha is the word. Papishtha means if someone is papa nishtha. If someone is very determined that I will commit sin. Papa nishtha 
api gachanti even such a person if he chants hari naam gachanti he will go where vishnur dham niramayam he will go towards the abode of vishnu there is no doubt but interestingly papishtha api gachanti it doesn't say gachati it doesn't say singular gachanti plural he goes with others so this is the question often times we say if someone is becomes a devotee 21 generations become liberated you heard this someone becomes a devotee where is that coming from listen skanda purana prabhasa khanda dwaraka mahatmya atitan sapta purushan behind we see in the past seven generations sapta purushan get liberated and bhavishyancha chaturdasha chaturdasha means 14 Seven generations behind and fourteen generations ahead. Seven plus fourteen, twenty-one generations. Nara, Tara, Yate, Sarvan, all of them get liberated. Kalau, Krishna, Iti, Kirtana. In Kali Yuga, just by chanting Krishna, twenty-one generations get liberated. Therefore, Narada Mahapuran says, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Iva Kevalam. Kalau nasti, Iva nasti, Iva nasti, Iva gati ranya tha. Don't worry, there is no other way. Just take complete shelter of Hari Nama. all the sins of the past get burnt all good fortune will come heart gets purified all transcendental knowledge appear in the heart hari naam will show us where pure devotees are there hari naam will show us suddenly when we start chanting hari naam and we increase our count we see our taste for hari naam increases so much that automatically now we start getting association of those who are chanting more they were always present in our life but we never realized their importance now we are chanting 32 rounds automatically hari naam will open the curtains and say oh that prabhu is also doing 32 this mataji is also doing 32 this prabhu ji is also doing 32 automatically our heart gets affection for such devotees we get affectionate oh this prabhu is chanting 32 this prabhu is also chanting 32 i want his association then when we increase it to 48 Hari Nam will open the curtains more to show. Oh, this Prabhu is also chanting 48. That Mataji is also chanting 48. They were always there in our life, but Hari Nam has opened the curtain now so that we can see. All good fortune is there. Liberation comes from Hari Nam. One gets one swarup, one spiritual body through Hari Nam. Everything comes from Hari Nam. <clears throat> so therefore, Prabhu Pad uh, asked Hamsa Dutta Prabhu, please tell me why I have written so many books. Ham Sadhu Tapa Prabhu said, "So that we get philosophically strong." Prabhupada said, "No, so that you philosophically get convinced to chant Hare Krishna 24 hours. To convince you to chant Hari Nam, I have written so many books." Prabhupada said. So therefore, first one hour we discussed about uh, the painful suffering uh, inflicted in uh, 28 hells described in the 26th chapter of the fifth canto. That is. so that we go through the dark tunnel of of uh, gambhirta of being very grave but then once we realize that we are so sinful and we have no way no hope then next 30 minutes we discussed about hari naam mahatmya if someone is chanting hari naam we don't have to worry about any hell no hell yamadutas will definitely come even if you are chanting hari naam yamaduta will come but they will not come to drag us they will come to take darshan of the chanter of the hari naam they will come to touch the feet of hari naam naam nishta sadhu so therefore uh, chanting hari naam is kalyananam nidhanam kalimala mathanam pavanam pavananam so beautifully it has been described that pavanam pavananam hari naam uplifts those who are uplifted it is not described that hari naam uplifts those who are sinful because those who are sinful can get uplifted even through deity worship even through bhagavatam even through living in vrindavan even through associating with sadhus but after performing all this when the person becomes pure that person can also be uplifted by chanting hari naam pavanam pavananam jinka uddhar ho chuka hai unka aur bhi uddhar karne wala hari naam hai somebody who is already uplifted to uplift him further and give him everything whatever he lacks hari naam will give hari naam fulfills everything even materially hari naam fulfills everything spiritually hari naam fulfills everything hmm. therefore vicheyani vicharyani vichintyani puna punaha krupanasya dhanani va tvan namani bhavantu me he krishna just like a miserly greedy person he collects counts and remembers his wealth again and again let me collect count and remember your holy name every single day my very worshipable shila guru maharaj uh, 
he says that every morning as we wake up from sleep, we should think this is a new birth. Just like we don't remember our past birth, all the good that we have done, we should forget the bhajan that we have done yesterday. Fresh day, we should take it as fresh birth, fresh life and perform Hari Bhakti that day with intensity that I have only 24 hours left. Then in sleep, we should think we are dead. Now next day, again, new birth. In this way, every day we should perform Hari Bhakti. So having said this, I really want to thank uh, His Grace Venu Vadak Prabhu and all the devotees joining on this call. I'm really sorry uh, you all came online to hear His Grace Gauranga Prabhu, who was uh, supposed to give some, uh, some uh, very, very sweet Hari Katha from Chaitanya Charitamrita. But uh, I was not aware of, um, of uh, <laughs> I thought I would hear him uh, through the class, uh, but but as Krishna has inconceivable plans, uh, I'm very, very happy to serve all the devotees. I have never, ever, ever uh, associated with devotees for one and a half hours and the clock reads 5 a.m. I've never, uh, never associated that early because we go even late up to Janmashtami, but then we don't wake up at 3.30, at least I don't. But it's interesting. I feel very happy. So sorry that you had to go through this and uh, the expectations were so high that Gauranga Prabhu would speak. But, uh, I, you know, you had to see my face. It's almost like, uh, you know, in, in, in the language of cricket, everyone comes to see Sachin Tendulkar bat. And then Sachin Tendulkar is not there. So you catch someone from the street with a plastic bat and plastic ball. And you say, now you, you know, you, you play. But all of you have been very kind to be online and encouraging me to speak Harikatha. So that all these verses, they inspire me to chant the holy name and, in, in, and inspire all of us to chant the holy name. All glories to Srila Prabhupada because the whole world was going into hellish condition. Can you imagine? The whole world is making its way towards hell. And Prabhupada came with the weapon of the holy name and created a Hare Krishna explosion, pulling everyone from hellish condition up and making them sadhus to, sell, to deliver the whole world. So it is indeed, uh, it is a miracle. That Srila Prabhupada, with so much surrender, so much dedication to his Gurudev, with power of Harinam, has uh, shook the world and continues to shake the world. So we should always, when we chant Harinam, we should remember Prabhupada. We can never repay the debt. Never repay the debt. Prabhupada has saved our lives. Chakshudan Dilojai Janme Janme Prabhu Se. Lifetime after lifetime, we would have struggled in hell. But Prabhupada pulled us up just by the power of Harinam. Thank you, everyone. I pass the call back to. Uh, Venu Vadak Prabhu, we can uh, take some questions or comments for about uh, 10 minutes. Thank you. Thank you so much, Prabhuji. I have one question, but just before that, Prabhu, we really want to thank you so much. Uh, you know, you started at 3.30 a.m., Prabhu. Uh, we have no words, Prabhu, to describe how much mercy we got. And, and Prabhu, on the call, we have uh, devotees from Wellington Yatra, thanks to His Grace Amrish Prabhuji. We have devotees from Christchurch Yatra, thanks to His Grace Gorachandra Prabhuji. We have devotees from Auckland Yatra, thanks to Her Grace Krishna Mahi Mataji. We have many devotees from Melbourne Yatra Prabhuji, thanks to Ojasvi Prabhuji, Vishal Prabhuji, and many more. We have many devotees from Sydney Yatra uh, joining us, thanks to Ankit Prabhuji, Kanika Mataji, Nand Gokul Prabhuji, who is directly uh, you know, putting a live cast to Sydney, it's called Sydney YouTube. So many other devotees are, 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 are ben, have benefited from this. We have devotees from Canberra Yatra Prabhuji, uh, from Adelaide, from Perth, and many more devotees from India. I, I don't know them personally, but they, they, they all have so thankful Prabhuji, and they're sending message in the messaging chat. So we have no words to thank you Prabhuji. Once again, thank you so much. Koti Koti Bandut Pranam Prabhuji for your time. Look, yeah. at, this, uh, look at this amazement that during lockdown, when the world is completely shut down, Harinam has got devotees across continents together on virtual communication, commu virtual media, where we are looking at each other's smiling faces. And we are all inspiring each other to chant Harinam and remember Harinam. If Harinam can do this during the lockdown, imagine what Harinam can do when the lockdown is not there. Harinam has the power to do anything and everything. So this faith one must have. Uh, one of my Siksha Guru, very beautifully, he describes, very, very beautifully, one of my Siksha Guru describes that Tulsi is actually a messenger of Krishna. So when she's placed on the throat, Tulsi Kanti, she is Tulsi Brinda Devi is actually a messenger of Krishna. So when she is placed on the throat, 
she gives direct report to Krishna how much Harinam this throat is chanting. She passes that message that this person is cheating for every one round he's pulling two beads down and cheating everyone that he's doing more. But Brinda Devi sitting here is giving direct Facebook broadcast to Radha and Krishna that they can watch how much Harinam is going through the throat. So therefore Kanti means giving Tulsi a reason to go to Krishna and say that this Jiva is actually chanting so much, please uplift him. So I'm very grateful that devotees are joining. If there is any, uh, <clears throat> any mistakes in this presentation, please forgive me. The one line essence is forget everything. We are on high emergency. Aag lagi hai, bhago. Run out of this material world by chanting Harina. And we are mutually there to help each other. And if there is any good that we see in this presentation, is all the the happy inherited property of our uh, of our parampara. They are giving it to us. They have worked all their life to collect all this. We are like uh, the sons of rich men. We have to simply sit in an AC showroom and 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 enjoy, <laughs> enjoy. That's all. So thank you. It was my pleasure to participate. Yeah. So Prabhu, thank there's you. one one question, Prabhu, if uh, if it's okay, Prabhuji. Uh, uh, question is, uh, is Prabhuji, uh, you know, as you spoke about hellish planet, so uh, how can one suffer in the hellish hell because the soul travels to the hell, not the body, and the soul can't be harmed? Uh, so that's a question, Prabhuji, if you can, please. Yeah, so just like we see in, in the jail, they give you a specific jail outfit. The subtle, so the gross body is left behind here, but the soul covered by the subtle body goes there. And then is given a very nice hellish gross covering. It's like a rubber covering, which will not, even when there is biting and punching and scratching and kicking, the body doesn't tear. So it inflicts more pain. So just like in this world, we see prisoners are given a specific outfit. They are in the hellish planets also. Yamadutas, they welcome the jiva. Aye, padhariye. And then they give an outfit in the form of a specific suitable body where it can it can stand a lot of suffering it, the, the high uh, high tolerance level but there's so much pain so yeah thank you thank you prabhuji just a, a couple of announcements for everyone prabhuji and then we will wrap it up uh, so the recording from his grace goranga prabhuji session as i mentioned prabhuji had pre-recorded the session because of the internet issues and in the last minute, we were going to play that recording, but then I requested His Grace Amrinder Prabhuji. So what we've got today is we have got an understanding of hellish planets, how we're going to be treated there. Prabhuji has also given us a medicine for that. And then through the lecture of His Grace Goranga Prabhuji, you all can hear how merciful, how glorious their Lordship Lord Jagannath is. He comes himself to take us back. If we fear of hellish planets, chant the holy name nicely then Lord Jagannath is just waiting for us. So, so I will be posting that recording on the Facebook so you can download and hear that. And there'll also be recording from this session, which you can download and play and share with your respective yatras. And uh, because we requested Prabhuji to, to you know, take this class today, we have a scheduled session with Amrind Prabhuji tomorrow, uh, tomorrow Sydney time, 8 p.m. Uh, so we will have to postpone that uh, so we had two more sessions with Prabhuji tomorrow the Monday and Monday the 1st of June. So now we'll have Monday the 1st of June and then Monday the 8th of June. So we'll have still, Prabhuji has kindly agreed that he will still give us two sessions, but just the tomorrow we will have to, uh, you know, take a break. And I think let's go away and contemplate on the hellish planets, uh, you know, <laughs> next week and, 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 you know, listen to class again. So that's all Prabhuji. Thank you so much Prabhu. Uh, Koti Koti Dandut Pranam Prabhuji, we all want to chant Hare Krishna Mahamantra for you. Uh, I think everybody can raise their arms even if they are on mute. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. All glories to His Grace Amrind Prabhuji, all glories to His Grace Gauranga Prabhuji, all glories to Srila Prabhupada, and all glories to all the devotees who joined this session today. Hari Hari Bo. Hari Bo. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. See you next week. Hari Bo.